This is Donna Reish with our final episode of Meet Meaningful Composition. Hopefully you have in front of you your sample book. If you are a vendor or a homeschool curriculum provider or a curriculum provider of any kind because um, we do have some small Christian schools using Meaningful Composition as well. But you have this in front of you, I hope, and if not, you can go to the blog or to the Character Inc. store and get all of the um, samples there, two weeks of each lesson, two weeks of each book has a sample, uh, as samples there at the blog and the store. This final episode is going to be talking about research writing. I want to bring to your attention some of our approaches and uh, some of our lessons that we have in here about research writing. So in your table of contents, um, you can see that we have research writing in the junior high section. We do have research writing in the elementary and in the early elementary and the late elementary. So let me talk about that briefly. The research writing in the early elementary, that's the second and third grade books that are coming out in April of 2016, those are amazingly cute. I can just say that. And so are the students using them. We have been really fortunate the last two years to be able to get a good group of second and third graders to test our books. It's difficult to get younger students to commit to a 16 week semester of writing, 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 and testing that many, and especially um, with everything else that elementary students do. And it's sometimes just easier, you know, for parents not to bring them out to another class. And also just because um, the demands are heavy because we have to keep moving ahead. Uh, to test the books. So, but we've been blessed the last two years to get some really good groups of second and third graders testing our books and they are absolutely darling. They are so excited about all the projects that they get to write about. And in research writing in those grades, that can be a very challenging um, type of writing to do. So we do that in a number of ways. Um, some of the same techniques that we use with essay writing with them, we also use with research writing, except in essay writing, they tell what they think about something. Um, maybe they you know, do a question and answer format or something like that. But in um, the uh, um, research writing, they even if they have a question and answer format, they have to get a, look it up at a source. So we use some techniques with them that make research writing super, super simple. And we start out with one paragraph and they might, for example, have a one paragraph um, research report about a mammal and they have to choose their mammal and then there are questions that we ask them and they just have to answer them with notes on each line. So they have to go look up the brown bear, whatever they've chosen, and they just make notes and then make that into a paragraph. Another technique we use for the essays and research writing at that level is called the paragraph hounds. And we have a, a roof, um, which is the uh, closing sentence. We have a foundation, which is the opening sentence. And then we have four quads in the middle. And they have to fill those quads with information, one piece of information per, per square. And then they use that to write from. So a lot of really fun and cute techniques um, that we use. Sometimes we give them sources and they write uh, encyclopedia-like, as we tell them. Um, and other times they find information themselves. Once we move into the upper elementary, the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, we merge two paragraphs, and, and very, uh, very much so in the fourth grade books, where they have one paragraph about um, a black bear and one paragraph about a brown bear. And so they're very, they have very specific things to look up. It makes them very easy, the research very easy for them. Um, and then we also move into, uh, you know, multiple paragraphs where they do like three paragraphs about um, three different uh, presidents. So one about one paragraph, one about one president, one about another. So it's simplified because all along the way it's incremental, just like all of our books are. But it's also either a question and answer, a five W's, a paragraph house, a um, fill in the blanks, fill in the boxes those type of things, all very, very simple outlining techniques. The ones that we're gonna show you in here are actually junior high and high school. And so um, I want to take you to weeks 12, 13, and 14. Again, these weeks are not in order because they came from different books, but the page numbers are accurate. I wanted to leave the weeks in so you can see where it falls in a book. So you can see if I had numbered it week one, week two, week 
screen for, that wouldn't show you where it falls in each level. So you can see here in the upper level, upper elementary level, week one, week 14 is later in an elementary book, week seven and eight is earlier, like midway through a creative writing book, because each of our books have 16 weeks in them. So anyway, let's move on back to uh, page 119. And I did bring this to your attention earlier when I was talking about sentence by sentence outlining from given material. So I've talked about this a little bit uh, in a previous video. But again, we start out giving them the source. You can see on page 119 in the overview, the write on slash additional skills that they're going to learn in order to write reports. So these are the skills they're going to have there. On 120, we give them the source, opening paragraph, paragraph of body A, paragraph of body B, paragraph of body C. We teach them the difference between an essay and a report on page 121. On page 122, they outline from the source. Page 125 has a sample of an, a, one paragraph, the outline and the actual paragraph sample. And then over on page 126, we teach first, second, and third person writing, uh, teaching them to always write formally in the third person in formal essays and in research reports. Then we have an introduction to quotes. They've already had quotes earlier because this is week 12 of a seventh grade book. So this is not the first time that they had quotes. So this is a little bit more advanced quote lesson than what they had earlier in the book. General information, how to include a quote in your outline, and then how to include it in your actual paper. And um, we have the parents walk through this with them slowly uh, because we teach using samples and we teach each aspect of it. Um, actually, you can see here on page 131 uh, when it says details of quote rule with beginning speech tag, Helen Keller said, although the world is full of suffering, it is full also of the overcoming of it. You can see how we have this, the speech tag underlined, the beginning of the quote bold fonted, the end of the quote shaded. So we're teaching all the elements of quotation use. Quotation use is very, very tricky. The rules are so difficult and they're even different from USA than they are from other countries. That makes it hard. It's difficult whether you are putting a speech tag at the beginning or in the middle or at the end. So we have detailed quotation lessons that quite literally took two years to create just quotation lessons, working on them part-time, obviously. Um, but we have source samples there. We want to teach them how to do it so that they know when they go in their paper, I can do this, I can do this. And also in our classes, they know that we're there to help them edit it too. So those lessons are really important for parents too because uh, most adults don't know how to use quotations and it's not, you know, that's a, a skill that not everybody uses all the time. So sometimes we lose that skill. We teach the five paragraph report with train analogy. We always try in all of our teaching to take a new uh, concept back to something old. So it, in all my classes, I always tell the students if they, if we um, suppose we're learning about um, possessive pronouns, um, I would have them circle the word pronoun, draw an arrow to the margin. What does a pronoun mean? Pro means for a noun, so write for a noun. And then I'd have them highlight possessive, draw an arrow to the margin, what does that mean? Ownership, write own, O-W-N. And they tell me what they know. So we always try to relate it back to what they already know. And so here we have a train analogy on pages 134 and 135, in which we show them that the, par the uh, train cars represent paragraphs of the body, and the engine represents the opening paragraph, and the um, caboose represents the closing paragraph. So that helps them get into their minds that a paragraph is a unit of thought. When I change paragraphs, I also have to change thoughts or topics. So that is a research report that's from a source, but the next week they are going to write their own research report um, from a, um, their own sources. And they're going to write about three plants because they just wrote about three poisonous plants uh, from the sample, from the source. And so now they're going to write about three plants that they choose. This is on 145 in the overview box. They can choose any three plants they want. And we teach them how to decide what to put in it on page 147. 
and 148, you can see that the species is in bold font, the, where the plant originated from is in italics, uh, the type of tree is underlined, the breeding is in light shade, and we use that, uh, use samples to teach them how they can find material for their paragraphs. And then we give them a choice of topics. They can choose others, but here are some things that they could look up to include in each paragraph. And we teach them about the pattern paragraph and how the, in the pattern paragraph, everything has to be the same. So whatever they include about apples on 148, they also have to include about peaches. And whatever they include about peaches, they also have to include about pears. They can choose to use the pattern paragraph or to use freestyle paragraphs. Again, this is weeks 13 and 14. So this is the next to the last project in this book. They've already had a lot of research skills built up to this point. So the pattern paragraph isn't as difficult as it might sound to somebody who's never done it, but they, they built up to this. 151, they have to get to their thesis statement. Um, 152, they choose their topics. 153 is a sample of a pattern paragraph outlining box. The species for the apple, the peach, and the pear. Where it originated from, and for the apple, the peach, and the pear, and so forth. And then guess what? They do it themselves on 154. Then we teach them color-coded research. So, uh, and we teach this in essay writing as well as in research writing. And that is where they choose their paragraph topics. And then they get their source and whatever, suppose they chose apples, and we teach this throughout the books, but suppose they, if apple was their first paragraph, they would highlight apple and pink. And then when they print out their sources, everything they think they want in the apple paragraph will be pink. And then peach, if they chose, if they highlighted that in green here, everything in their sources will be highlighted in green. And then when they're ready to outline, it is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now this is a very, very, um, very, simplified version of the color coding app, color coding research. I would like to move back because I'm going to run out of time to the benefits of the sun. That is the last project in your sample book and it says weeks 13 and 14. It is near the end of a high school book. So um, that just tells you where it falls in the difficulty level and uh, at the top of it weeks 13 and 14 says cause and effect research report benefits of the sun. And in this approach, you can see that we have so many skills coming together. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner where it says write on additional skills, you will see all of the skills that they are using in this. But keep in mind that this is the next to last project in a high school book. All of, most, all of these skills they've already had previously, but now we're going to build on those in that incremental fashion that I've been talking about. So here are paragraph topics that they can choose from. So the sun strengthens the bones and builds muscles. It causes plants to grow. It regulates the schedule of plants. It cleanses shorelines. It provides food and so forth. This project is very detailed. They're going to have six paragraphs for a basic student and eight paragraphs for an extension student for the body. Then they're going to have an opening paragraph and they're going to have a closing paragraph. The basic students will use two sources and the extension students will use three sources. We really start in the high school books merging sources and actually in the upper junior high books. We tell them that when you get a source and you take notes on it on your cards, because we have all kinds of outlining techniques, but if you're using the outlining card technique for research writing and you write your information from that source, that is a middle school skill. That is an early middle school skill. At this level, you should be able to get three sources, color code each paragraph, the sun strengthens bones will be yellow, the plants to grow, cause the plants to grow will be pink, regulates the schedule, the plants will be green, and then you should be able to take your three sources and highlight your material and merge it. Now, I don't have time to go into the entire lesson because it actually takes an hour to teach this lesson, um, but I will tell you that all of that is broken down in here and all of the pre-writing skills are given that the student needs to be able to do this project. Again, we don't ever say write a report about the sun. Okay, what do you mean about the sun? You know, what should I include in that? And so forth. I will bring you uh, to a couple of more things I want to point out to you. First of all, uh, near the end of the project, we have the sample. So there is a sample report for them to look at. The sample report has the quotations in it, it has the work cited 
in it. And so uh, it is just very, very uh, representative of the entire project. That's important. Also, you can see in lesson A, we have looking ahead at the method that we use. This is just a box that shows you the whole method in easy steps and then every assignment teaches them how to do that all throughout the project. They have to choose their paragraph topics again. We're still working on that. A paragraph is a unit of thought. If you're going to go from the sun uh, cleaning shorelines to the sun providing food, you need to go to a new paragraph. And so we teach them how to do that. We teach them how to determine the differences between major works and minor works. And they use bibliography cards that are found at the end of the lesson. The bibliography cards, I can't even begin to tell you how long they took and how many times we had to test them. I bet these bibliography cards were probably tested 100 different times with five students average to get to this point because we kept finding out they needed this. They didn't understand that. They didn't know where the comma went. They didn't understand whether they put the author first or the um, book title first. And so all of that is laid out in their cards. I always tell the students, if you fill out your card exactly as it's given on here, your work cited will be perfect because that's how perfect the cards are based on the type of source. And so they learn all about major works and minor works. They learn all about merging sources, not just using one source. They're not even allowed to get more than 30 to 50% of information from any one source at the beginning high school level. And then quotation inclusions. This is much more advanced quotation material because we've had general quotation, but now how can you put it into a report when you have all these different sources? How do you put quotes in a source that came from a book that you made into a quote versus a quote that was already a quote. So then we teach how to create the work cited with an extensive sample. And then we teach transitions and everything the student needs. And then at the back, in the back matter, they have their bibliography cards. They have their outlining cards. The outlining cards are laid out in a foolproof manner. Paragraph of body A is the first benefit. Paragraph of body B is the second benefit. Support sentence, support sentence, support sentence, and so on until they are completely ready to write. And then, of course, the advanced checklist challenge. That was such a quick look at research writing. If I could take you to um, all of our research projects, I could show you more of the incrementality, but it is all very incremental. When you look at that project and you think, oh, my ninth grader couldn't do that. That's way too hard. That There are way too many steps in that. There, the, the whole MLA citation method and the and the work cited and the quotes, that's way too hard. They start, we start out in fifth grade putting a quote in a report, or actually they start out in fourth grade. Um, and we have boxes where they put their quote here, then they put the first sentence they wanna say about their quote, the second sentence they want to say about their quote, and they put it together. So, so laid out, so directed. And then they have to add a quote with an ending speech tag. And then they have to, uh, Fill out a bibliography, fill out two bibliography cards, and write those sources out. And then they have to color code two different sources. And it is so incremental that everything you've just seen in there, if I brought it to one of my eighth, ninth, or tenth grade classes by uh, their second meaningful composition book, they would they wouldn't bat an eye. It would it would not even phase them. They'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember I learned those quotes. Oh yeah, I know the color-coded research. I remember I did that, remember I did that just for my essay a little bit ago. And uh, it would just, it wouldn't even phase them. They don't even blink an eye because of the incrementality, because of the directed writing, because how they are taught every skill they need. They are confident writers. And that's what I would like for your students to be too. Thank you for joining me for this series of Meaningful Composition. Uh, hopefully we'll hear from you. You can contact us via email or um, go to our store. There are lots, every, we're all everywhere with our contacts now and our store has samples. You can go see, through and see samples of everything again if you want to of all the different books uh, there at our store. We'd love to talk to you if you are a vendor or a homeschool provider about possibly carrying meaningful composition, about making meaningful composition part of your curriculum or even about us writing 
your own meaningful composition just for your programs. Thank you for joining me. This has been Donna Reish with Character Inc. Press.